Today, I want to talk to you guys about the power of your mind. And it's really important. I was having a conversation with my wife about an hour or two ago on our morning walk, and we're baffled as to where the country is right now with the current administration. So we're going to get a little pol political, even though it's not a political channel, but it affects all of us. Why is it important? Why is this critical? The power of the mind. We're talking conscious and subconscious, and there's differences. At times, we don't even know the behaviors that come out. We're not aware of the reactions we have to certain things that happen in our lives. This is why I say the power of the mind is very important. I've spent a great deal of my life trying to understand this so that I can get stronger, mind, body, and spirit. And then as I have learned so much, I try to teach this. I try to help and empower people to understand this too. We oftentimes make many decisions on impulse and uh, emotional uh, output. So this is something that uh, affects all of us. And getting better at recognizing this, getting better at understanding how your mind is working in the subconscious space uh, will also help you make better choices naturally, right? Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike. And every week I talk about things I care about. This is certainly one of them. Today's Daily is brought to you by Grass Door. As if you didn't know, if you've been here before, you know, you can save 40% if you use the code daily at checkout and get your weed delivered today. So there's been all these clips of Biden over the last, you know, several years. And we see that uh, there, it's serious cognitive decline. And my wife and I are talking about this saying like, this is crazy, man. How is it that everyone can see this and yet nobody um, wants to vote differently? Now, I have seen many people who have changed their minds. Yes. But there's still a great many who just will not accept it. And this is where the power of the mind comes in. The mind is so powerful, it uh, tries to protect you from yourself at times. And one of the things that comes up again and again is the fear, fear of being wrong and the fear of how that affects your ego. This is inherent in every single person and it just varies so much. Uh, in this instance, I want to share this clip with you. That's why I and so damn many other people I grew up have cancer. And why can't for the longest time, Delaware had the highest cancer rate in the nation. Now, a video like this, though it's kind of put together in this clip and they're just shorts, there's so much evidence here that this person is unfit to do this job. And yet, when people on the streets are asked again and again through other uh, YouTube channels and other creators who have the courage to go out there and confront people and say, who are you voting for in the next election? And many of them say Biden, even when they have seen this, uh, these clips, even when they have um, witnessed it, they just are, I don't know, they're blinded by something and or the reality is the power of the mind. They do not want to be wrong. And their their mind and their ego tells them, well, if I admit defeat, if I admit I'm wrong, you know, then they're it, as if their whole life is going to crumble. But realistically, the country is going to fucking crumble as a result if, you know, we can't help people see the, the reality, the true nature of what's going on. Um, and this is something I, I feel like is important to talk about. It's okay to be wrong. And some of the things that you can try to teach yourself uh, so that you don't have an ego breakdown uh, when you are wrong and must be right is to accept accountability. Ex having the acceptance of being wrong can only help you so that you can learn to be right and to be uh, able to make better choices it's okay to be wrong. And for a lot of these people that we see, they just refuse to be wrong, that the candidate they chose in the last election was a terrible choice, and that supposedly that was the lesser of two evils. I beg to differ, because shit is a lot worse today than it was four years ago, and that was in the midst of lockdowns and everything else. So how can we sit here and be like, yes, we want another four years of this. And this specifically goes out to the people who really don't have arguments. Those who just refuse to accept that they made a poor decision and chose the wrong candidate. 
um, and refuse to change their votes or their opinions. And when they're asked about it, they're like, it's an obvious choice. We're going to vote Biden again. Like, how? Regardless of all the other news surrounding the corruption, because frankly, everyone's got skeletons in the closet. Everyone has done something wrong, especially in politics. And generally speaking, the parties uh, are loyal to the parties themselves. They'll even dig up dirt on each other to get what they want. They'll leverage each other to get what they want. So it's it's just uh, smoke and mirrors, oftentimes, what we are um, able to see in the media, which is also controlled. So reality is you have to accept that sometimes you're going to be wrong. You have to allow yourself that wiggle room to grow and uh, be accountable, accountable to your decisions. Accountability is a good thing. Yes, it hurts to be wrong. Yes, it hurts when there's consequences of being wrong. But this is, you know, the consequences of these choices have enormous impacts globally as we are witnessing in real time and over the last several years. So the power of the mind, it is very, very strong. And if you cannot break these habits, if you cannot um, gain control over your behaviors, your emotional output, you are likely to repeat the mistakes of the past again and again and again. Why? Because you fear change. You fear being wrong. You fear being held accountable for something. And I see this in every uh, facet of life, no matter where I do business, no matter where I spend money, people don't want to be wrong. They don't want to be held accountable. And honestly, a lot of times they rather shift blame for something that they may have been directly uh, associated with. I don't know. But what do you think? I can go on for a while on this because I've spent a great deal of time thinking about it. But these are these are simple tools that people need in their lives. You will grow to be a better, stronger person for tomorrow if you can begin to just take control of your mind and your body and your emotions and have the acceptance of like, nope, I was definitely wrong. I fucked up. That was a mistake. How can I do it better? That is how you grow. One of the greatest lessons in life that... I was awakened to just a few years ago is simply people grow when they are in great pain. People will change and do complete 180s in their in their lives, their lifestyles, their relationships, whatever it may be. They'll do a complete 180 when they're in such great deal of pain that they cannot handle anymore and then change becomes a reality because what they were living is just not sustainable. They don't want it. And it's very painful for them to continue that way. That is something I have witnessed. That is something I have experienced personally. And that has helped me grow to a place where I can say, I accept pain. I understand it for what it is. And I'm willing to live through it because it will make me stronger. I do not shy away from any type of pain. And we're not talking about necessarily physical pain. We're talking about the pain of consequence, the pain of choices, many facets and examples of this that are not physical pain, though sometimes it can cause physical pain. What do you think about this? This is truly you know, um, a pain point in our country in this very point in time. And we really have to make a serious choice, not just for the next election, but for the next 10 to 20 years. There's a lot at stake here. Leave them down below and I'll catch you guys on the next one.